I hope you're here to learn how to turn your PowerPoint presentation into a video that you can play over and over and over, because that's what this video is all about. Coming right up. All right, so I'm inside a PowerPoint where I have a very simple three slide presentation in which I'm gonna to try to cover everything you need to know about creating a video on PowerPoint. However, you should know that your limits are pretty much endless as you become more and more of an expert in PowerPoint. The first thing I wanna show you is how to add music to your presentation so it plays across all of your slides and gives you a background track for your finished video. Here's the first slide on my PowerPoint. I'm gonna click on the Insert tab. From there, I click on Audio and Audio from my PC. I have a simple background track which I added to my computer earlier. Some PCs might already have some sample music downloaded, which is just fine for background music depending on your preferences and how picky you are. When I add it, you'll notice that the playback tab appears and it gives me some options. In order to have this play across all slides and start automatically when I start recording my slideshow, I need to change a few settings. I'm going to work from left to right when explaining this piece. First, let's say I want to cut a piece of my audio meaning I want to cut some off the beginning or end to make it work for my presentation. I can do that by clicking on Trim Audio. Then all I need to do is drag the green and red sliders to make the music start or stop in the desired locations. I'm actually going to keep my song at full length for this tutorial, so I'll just click OK. Now, let's say I want the music to fade in or out, meaning it starts out quiet and gets louder, or starts out loud and gets quieter. I can do that by changing the fade in or fade out settings. So let's say I want it to fade in over five seconds so it's not quite as abrupt. And then I want it to start to fade out over the last 10 seconds. Just replace the zeros with your desired time frames. It's that simple. The next thing I need to do is decide on some other options for my audio. For instance, I need to decide the volume of it. If you want your music to play in the background while you speak, then you're gonna to wanna to set the volume to low. This next tip might be the most important. If you add music to slide one, it's only going to play on slide one when you record, unless you check the box that says play across all slides. Also, you might have a PowerPoint presentation that is over 10 minutes, but your song is only two minutes. You can choose to have the music loop on so that it continues to play until your presentation is done recording. Also, you'll want to ensure to click the hide during show tab so that you don't see the little speaker at the bottom of the page during your presentation. The last thing you wanna do is decide when your music starts. As you're recording your presentation, you'll need to decide if the music should start playing automatically, in sequence, or when you click on it. I almost always choose to have it start playing automatically, since I've already chose to have it fade in and out. That just means that this music will start playing automatically as soon as I move to this slide when I'm recording. Alright, so now that I have some music set up in my PowerPoint, the next thing that I want to do is set up some simple animation to spice up the video a little bit. On slide two, I want the text to appear when I tell it to appear during the presentation. So I'm going to set up some timing on that text. It's pretty simple actually. I want each bullet to appear as I talk about it in my video. All I need to do is click on the box that I have the bullets in and then click on the animations tab at the top. Now I can choose my animation. I like to use the simple fade option. After you click on that option, you should see a preview of what this animation will look like. Then you should see numbers show up next to the bullets. If you wanted to, you could change when and how each bullet appears. For instance, let's say I want the first bullet to show up by itself, but I want the last two bullets to show up at the same time. I do that by clicking on Animation Pane and then hitting the drop down arrow. From there, you can click on each mouse and choose what will make the text appear. I'm going to keep the first and second bullet to be on my click, but since I want the third bullet to show up at the same time as my second bullet, I'm going to change that one to Start With Previous. If you want to see a preview of how the animation will come through, you can click on the first animation and then click on Play From. Alright, so I'm about to show you one of the coolest ways to work smarter and not harder in PowerPoint. On slide 3, I'd like to add a screen recording that helps show how to do the three bullets listed in the text box. I do that by clicking the Insert tab again. Now, all the way over to the right of your screen, you should have an option to click Screen Recording. When you click this tab, it's going to ask you to select the area of the screen that you would like to record. Once you have the area you'd like to record, you have to decide if you want to record your mouse pointer and or audio from your microphone. Once you're ready, just hit the record and it'll give you a three second countdown. When you're done recording, you can hover over the top of the screen until this pops down and then just click on stop. The screen recording will automatically go onto your slide. From there, you can resize it if you like. You'll also get a video format tab that will give you different border options and such if you'd like to play around with that. 
Also, just like the audio that we added in the first slide, this will allow us to open the playback tab and choose our preferences. I'm going to have this video start playing when I click on it. You can also trim the video or change the volume if you'd like to. Alright, now that we have the PowerPoint presentation set up the way we'd like it, now we can start recording and turning this into video. We'll do that by going to the Slideshow tab at the top. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm on the first slide of my PowerPoint. From there, I'm going to click on the drop down arrow on Record Slideshow. I always choose to start recording from the beginning of the slideshow. You should then get a screen that pops up that looks like this. From here, you'll want to ensure that you have the right settings for recording. For instance, you might want to make sure that you have the right microphone set up for a voiceover. You can also choose whether or not to record a video of yourself in the bottom right hand corner with your webcam. You can turn that off at any time throughout the recording, but it's a pretty neat little feature if you think it makes a better experience for someone to see you as you are speaking. You can also choose to record or not to record audio from your microphone as you go. If you aren't going to have a voiceover, I'd recommend turning this off, or you might pick up on things like mouse clicks or typing. Once you have the settings set up the way you like it, you should be able to just hit record and go. But before you hit record, it's important to recognize a few things. Number one, it gives you a three second countdown, but then records everything after that until you hit stop recording. So be ready to start talking or changing slides once you hit record. Number two, you should not talk between transitions. In other words, PowerPoint only records one slide at a time. It won't record your voice as you're transitioning from one slide to the next. So it's always a good idea to talk on one slide, then switch slides, and then start talking again. Let's give it a shot. Alright, I'm pretty happy with how slide 1 and 3 turned out, but I'm not very happy with how slide 2 turned out. So I'm going to close out of the screen record and do that slide over again. I can do that by clicking on the slide I want to redo. Now I can clear the timing and or narration on that one slide. Once I do that, I can just re-record this slide. I won't bother you with that though. I think we are ready to export this as a video. To do that, all I need to do is click on export on the file tab. From there, I can choose create a video. Now this is where you might need to do some planning. Depending on how you are going to share this video will determine which size or format you want to export it in. Unless you are planning on sharing this in an email, I'd recommend 1080p. That will give you a high definition video. From there, just make sure that if it isn't already selected, that you select use recorded timings and narrations. Now you are ready to create the video. From there, just name the video and choose where you want to save it. Once you hit save, you'll see a little progress bar at the bottom letting you know how much you have left before the video is done exporting. That time is going to vary depending on how long your PowerPoint or video is. Alright, let's take a look at the finished product, shall we? Hey everybody, thanks for joining this presentation on Working Smarter Not Harder. In this video, we're going to teach you exactly why you need to work smarter not harder. It saves you time, it makes you more productive, and clearly it's going to set you apart from your peers. I'm also going to show you how you can work smarter not harder. It's going to look like subscribing to my channel, hitting that bell notification, and watching my other videos. Wink wink. Thanks and have a great rest of your day. And that's it. Give me a like or a comment if you gained value from this video. Also, please let me know if you have any other video ideas and I'll try to get you in my next video. I really do read every comment, I promise.